the truth the girls the truth the girls hi everyone well a lot of people are kind of wondering you know what exactly caused the quake in Japan and there are many possibilities I thought I would share with you what I've found about you know several of them shall we start with um, harp now in case you don't know you know harp does have the capacity to be used as a tectonic weapon but that doesn't mean that every time there's an earthquake it was harp that did it a lot of the you know finger pointing at harp originated from Benjamin Fulford who said that um, when he had gone to Japan to ask them why they turned the financial system over to American and European oligarchs he was told by Hazel Takanaka that they had been threatened that if they didn't they would be hit with an earthquake weapon and that would be harp and then shortly after they were hit with an earthquake and Benjamin Fulford said that that was probably the work of harp there's the harp induction magnetometer an instrument that detects temporal variation of the geomagnetic field based on Faraday's law of mag magnetic induction and then when you uh, get these variations they show up like this on the graph so here's the 10th of March as you see there's a lot of activity 11th of March it's really off the charts and this is the kind of stuff that we saw also at the time of the Haiti earthquake however it measures natural phenomena you know so it doesn't mean that it's measuring the activity of the harp instrument itself it just measures changes in the geomagnetic field regardless of what they were caused by well here's Benjamin Fulford's blog and he does have some things to say about the Japan quake this is what Benjamin Fulford says he says that it was caused by uh, rogue elements of the US government located in underground bases in New Mexico and Nevada according to Pentagon and CIA sources and that the next target will be the New Madrid fault line in the southwestern United States according to threats originating from the Nazi George Bush senior faction of the US government so okay that's one possibility one hypothesis however meteorologist astrophysicist consultant and owner of the business weather action Piers Corbin was on the Alex Jones show the other day talking about the earthquake and tsunami and he said that this was related to natural galactic phenomena he said uh, the earthquake was preceded by an x-class solar flare and a significant hit of the earth by coronal mass ejection which was reported by NASA and that this may also have something to do with the phenomenon called the supermoon astrologers predict floods during supermoon March 19th basically it means that the moon will be swinging around the planet earth closely and that the distance will be least in the last 18 years because this does happen from time to time it's not like supermoon is something that happens you know once every million years and some were even saying that the extreme supermoon on March 19th could cause earthquakes high tides and extreme weather this article was from the 7th so it wasn't written after the fact and they say get ready for what could be moderate to severe weather weather patterns increased seismic activity tsunamis and more volcanic eruptions than normal this phenomenon includes the days leading up to March 19th and the days after until around March 22nd and that's interesting because that also fits in with um, what this YouTube user 9 Nanya says in this video March 11th to 23rd event signs and evidence she posted this video on the 8th of March predicting that there would be probably an earthquake uh, around the 11th and one thing that she brings up in this video is the comet Elenin so what she points out here is that on March 11th to 15th the comet Elenin the earth and the sun are like lined up in a direct line and she says if you're living in a fault zone you might want to take a vacation so you know you've got this coupled with the coronal mass ejection and a supermoon so I'd say there's a lot going on out there that could have some very uh, serious effects on the earth so I wouldn't chalk it all up to harp right away also she points out that you know some of the elite of the world seem to have some foreknowledge of this because uh, Jay Rockefeller and his family were hiding out in India at this time well, I guess they still are as well as Bill Gates and it just so happens that in India they have some kind of underground shelter uh, 
for the elites in case of some kind of nuclear catastrophes. Personally, I really do think that people like that have foreknowledge. I mean, even the military has foreknowledge about the weather, so I'm sure that they would know if something like this was coming. She also points out that this uh, has to do with the pole shift, which occurred on the 27th of February, and which is still occurring. We just had a pole shift uh, the other day when that happened. And if you don't believe that pole shift is happening, as I know some people just have to hear it from the mainstream media, here on my blog I posted this as well. A Euro News admits to accelerating pole shift. And another thing that's, you know, disturbing that I would take note of from the Nine Nanny video is that she says that, you know, something could also happen around the 22nd to 23rd of March, which, as I pointed out, this article about the supermoon also mentions that, uh, the phenomenon includes the days leading up to March 19th and the days after until around March 22nd. Some people think that the next disaster may occur along the New Madrid fault line in Arkansas. There's been a lot of talk of this on the internet. Are they preparing for a pretend event near New Madrid fault line? FEMA is apparently doing some kind of disaster response exercises in the eight states of the uh, New Madrid seismic zone and it's known as NMSZ, Catastrophic Earthquake Disaster Response Planning Initiative. And they're really spending a lot of money on it. So they're stocking up on blankets and food and feminine hygiene supplies and all this stuff. And also somebody sent me a message regarding some apparently intercepted communications, like CB communications, showing that there are foreign troops on American soil participating in some kind of disaster preparedness exercises. In any case, whether it would be from something like HARP being used, as Benjamin Fulford says, from underground bases in New Mexico and Nevada, or whether it's because of the pole shift and the supermoon or the comet Elenin, it's possible that, you know, actually I think it's very likely that we're going to be having a lot of disasters, I mean, between all these things. Even if HARP was totally out of the equation, plus you have post-glacial rebound, it looks to me like, you know, things aren't going to get any better. I mean, every earthquake seems to get worse. We sure seem to be having a lot of them, and plus the Bible says that, too, about the earthquakes. So, you know, just get ready for more of the same. And what can I say? you got to get prepared for this. Even FEMA has made a little list for you if you don't have a bug out bag or you know supplies they'll tell you what you need and then as I told you I've got my friend Jim with ultimatesurvivalsupplies.com who's got just about everything you could imagine and you know looking at the what happened in Japan to me it just kind of says you, you can do what you want to stockpile and to prepare but you know in the end it might not do you any good because look at those houses that tsunami they were just completely leveled so you can have all the supplies you want in your house. And it might not save you anyway. So honestly, I, kn I know some of you don't like when I get all, you know, Christian on you, but the, the, the time to invite God into your life is now. You know? And if you don't believe in God, we'll just say, God, I'm asking you to, you know, please reveal yourself to me. And it works. And if you don't know about Jesus, the Messiah, well... You know, look into it, because time's running out. Well, thanks for listening to me, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>